Hi everyone, this video looks at drawing cubic graphs. First we'll look at some of the toolkit that we need to draw graphs, and then we'll look at two different types of cubic graphs. Firstly, those graphs that have two stationary points, which are the more frequent cubic graphs that you draw. And secondly, cubic graphs that have only one stationary point. The two most important factors for drawing cubic graphs are shape and stationary points. Let's look at shape. What you look at is you look at the coefficient of the x cubed value. If your x cubed value is positive, then you will increase your graph first. So either increase, decrease, increase, or increase stationary and then increase. If your coefficient is negative, then the graph will decrease first, either decrease, increase, decrease, or just decrease. Next, we'll look at the stationary points. The stationary points are where the graph has a gradient of zero. This means it's where the derivative is zero. To find the x value, you set the derivative equal to zero and solve. And then to find the y value of the stationary point, you take the x value that you found and substitute it back into the original equation. Be careful here that you don't substitute it into the derivative, but rather you must substitute it into the original. Once you have the shape and the stationary points, the intercepts are optional, depending on what your instructions are. As always, to find the y-intercept, you make your x equal to 0 and solve for y. To find your x-intercept, you make your y equal to 0 and solve for x. Now in this case, you might need to use the factor theorem to find a factor. Either you need to prove that something is a factor, or you might need to find a factor, or maybe you already have a factor and so you don't need to do this part. Finally, if you need to find the inflection point, you'll find this where the second derivative is zero. It's a place where the graph changes conca concavity, either from concave up to concave down or the other way around. So what you do is you find the second derivative, set it equal to zero, and then that's how you'll find your x value. And then to find the y value, you substitute that x value that you found into the original equation. Let's quickly discuss how derivatives help us to draw cubic graphs. Let's say my cubic equation is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. The equation of my first derivative will be 3ax squared plus bx plus c. If you look at that carefully, you'll see it's the equation of a parabola. Parabolas have an increasing section, a zero section, and then a decreasing section. The second derivative will be 6ax plus 2b. If you look at the format of that, you can see that that would make a straight line. Now let's go back to the first derivative. If your first derivative is positive, it means that the graph, the original graph, is increasing because the gradient would be increasing. Remember, the derivative is about the rate of change, which is a gradient. If your first derivative equals to zero, that is where your original graph is stationary. And finally, if your first derivative is negative, it means that your original graph is decreasing because the gradient of the original graph will be negative. Let's say that again. So if your derivative is positive, your graph is increasing. If your derivative is negative, your graph is decreasing. And if it's zero, we have a stationary graph. Now the second derivative speaks about the gradient of the tangent. So if your second derivative is positive, then your original graph is concave up. You'll see the u, it's like having a u pointing upwards. If my second derivative is zero, it means I've got an inflection point where my graph changes from concave up to concave down or from concave down to concave up. And finally, if your second derivative is negative, then your original graph is concave down, meaning it will make the shape of an upside down U or part of that. Now let's get to drawing graphs. 
Our first example today is a graph that has two stationary points. For all graphs, start out by considering the shape. Since we've got negative x cubed, this graph will decrease first. Next, before even considering the intercepts, find the turning points. This will guide you for, to what you need. So, to find the turning points, you find your first derivative and make it equal to zero, and then solve. As you can see, that's a quadratic equation. I'm dividing both sides by negative three to simplify, factorize, and then in this case, I've got two solutions, x is three or x is one. Now I substitute each of those values back into the original equation. I haven't shown the full steps, and you won't need to show the full steps either if you do it on your calculator. Let's quickly think about what my graph would look like. I know what my two turning points are. I've got one on the x-axis at one, and I have another in the first quadrant when x is three and y is four. Also, I know that the shape goes down, up, down. Now I can find out the intercepts. The y-intercept is fairly easy to find. I just make x equal to zero, and I can see straight away that the intercept will be four. The x-intercept, I've already worked out my turning points and I know one of the turning points is an x-intercept. So I know that if x is an intercept, x minus one is a factor, according to the factor theorem. Since it's a turning point, it actually means that it sort of touches the axis twice. So actually, x minus one all squared is a factor. So now, if I factorize my original equation, I should be able to find the other x-intercept. Firstly, I'm going to take out negative one as a common factor, just to make my factorizing a lot easier. Now, x minus one all squared is going to give me negative x minus two x plus one. And then by inspection, I can see the missing factor is going to be x minus four. So now I know that my intercepts will be x is one, which I know already, and the other x-intercept that I need to find is x is four. I now have everything to fill in on my graph. The last thing, if I want to find it, find it out, would be the point of inflection. Now the point of inflection occurs when my second derivative is zero. Let's just go up and see what my derivative is. I don't need to work out the derivative again because I already did it when I did the turning points. So the second derivative will be negative 6x plus 12 is 0. Solve for x. I get x is 2. And then I substitute x is 2 into the original equation. I'm not showing all that working out, but what I'm going to get is also 2. Now I can finally draw my graph. Now in this example, I've put I'm going to put all the information in. The shape will be down, up, down. I've drawn two little dots to guide me with my intercept and my turning point since the y values are the same. Now on this graph, I'm going to draw the turning points in and the intercepts as well as the point of inflection. When you draw a graph, don't put all the information in unless you ask to. So if you're not asked for all the x-intercepts, don't work them out. Just work out what you need according to the instructions that you are given. Here's my point of inflection, and I'm just going to show you what the concave down and up looks like. So if I draw my, a line down where the point of inflection is, you'll see on the left of that, my graph is concave up, and on the right, my graph is concave down. And at that in-between point, I'll call that point the point of inflection. Let's get to our next example. I know that the shape will be increasing first. I don't know if it goes down in the middle yet from the structure of the graph. The stationary points, as usual, I make my derivative zero. I work out my derivative. It's quadratic as it should be expecting. I'm going to solve the quadratic equation by dividing both sides by three. And then you can see I've got a perfect square trinomial which factorizes to x minus two, x minus two, or x minus two all squared. This means that my x value will be two and that there's only one stationary point. 
I can then work out the y value of that, which will be 23. So if I draw a quick rough sketch, my graph will be increasing, and I know what my one stationary point is. It's going to be 2 and 23. So there's my graph increasing, stationary, and increasing after that. Before that point, I can see my graph is concave down. After that, I can see it's concave up. Now, if you wanted to, you could work out the inflection point. So you'll have your second derivative equal to zero. And then I can use my first derivative to work out the second derivative. And interestingly enough, you see that x is two, which should be the same as your turning points. That would make sense because there isn't that middle part of your curve. So you actually, in this case, don't need to work out the inflection point unless you wanted the inflection point to guide you on the concavity of the graph. The y-intercept is fairly easy to find. And then in this example, I'm going to find the x-intercept. You can't always find out the x-intercept. Sometimes the x-intercept is irrational and it will be difficult to factorize. But this one, I'm going to show you how to use the factor theorem. Clearly, one of my factors needs to be negative, so I've tried negative 1, substituted it into the formula. it equals to 0. Remember, if it equals to 0, x plus 1 is a factor. So now I can factorize that equation, and either it's going to factorize into a perfect cube, which I can actually see won't happen, or the other factor will not be able to factorize or be able to be solved in any way, for example, using the quadratic equation. So here, if I work out delta for that, I get uh, b squared negative 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 19, and I get negative 27. So I wouldn't be able to find out a root for the second part of that expression. So there's only one root, which is x is negative 1. And there's my graph. Here's the most basic cubic graph, y is equal to x cubed. As you can see, it has only one stationary point, which is also the inflection point and that lies on the origin. Now functions that are in a similar format could be just drawn using transformations. So if you've got x cubed plus 4, it'll just move the original graph 4 up, which means that my inflection point is now at 0 and 4. Or I could work out my x-intercept if I wanted to, it will be an irrational number of the cube root of negative or the negative cube root of 4. Another example, if I've got negative x plus 1 all cubed, the negative means the graph is going to go down, decreasing first, and the x plus 1 means the graph will move 1 left. So that means that my inflection point will lie at negative 1, 0, and it, my shape of my graph goes down first. One that's a little bit more complicated, I could have x minus 2 cubed minus 6. I know that my graph's increasing. I know that the point of inflection will be 2 right and 6 down. So I could think about where that would be. 2 right and 6 down. And there you go, there's my graph. So it's not a very accurate drawing. Just a rough sketch, because when I work out the um, y-intercept, if I say negative 8 minus 6, I get negative 14, which isn't really to scale according to what I've drawn. Again, I haven't worked out the x-intercept, so I'd only work out the x-intercept if you asked to, because sometimes the x-intercept is an irrational number, and it's quite difficult to work out with factorizing.